between the Gemara and the Poskim. So I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Yachad. Zat Hashem, today in Masechet Shabbat, we're going to start more than halfway down Mem Dalet Amur Aleph. And if we have the time, God willing, we're going to do all the way till Mem Hay Amur Aleph. That's it's a short Amur, Mem Dalet Amur Aleph. We're going to have two sections today in today's learning. The first, we're going to finish off this discussion, Legabe, moving candles after the fire has gone out. But we had a sentence in the Brayta yesterday that we didn't understand what the pshat was. Ashashit, kos, all these things, you're not allowed to move it. So we have to figure out what that is. We'll speak about a metal candlestick also. And then the second section we're going to get into is, which is a very interesting discussion. If you have something as a basis, essentially, for muktze, what happens to the basis? The case we're going to discuss is a bed that you designated for money. Not necessarily there's money on it, but you just said, I'm going to use this bed for money. You had a lot of money, Oh Hashem. Sound like Kipushim. Sound like, <laughs> you designated <laughs> it, that's going to be my bank. What do you mean designated it for money? Ken, I want to use this to keep my money inside. So now, you didn't even put money in it necessarily. Does that bed become muktze? Or Kalishem Rachdoli Yesu, there's two ways that we showed him, explain that you can't even move the bed on Shabbat anymore. And that will bring us into a discussion about this topic, which is a basis with the money, or if the just designation is sufficient. Very interesting. And this is actually going to be a machloket between Rabbi Yudan and Rabbi Shimon, like a lot of the topics of Muktzah that we've been discussing. Just a question. Yeah. According to Rabbi Yudan. Yeah. Chaim. Chaim Urvacha, Bayut, Bayut, Tefuah. Panasa. Benachat. Benachat. Like Rabbi Meir Liyahu said. Rabbi Yehuda, its shita is asu. Because of asur the... what? There's a lot of asu. Asu to, to move the, the base with the oil, right? The candle. Mishuma, mishum. Basis le davar asu? Davar... Mukze. Mukze machmat mius. That's what we explained. Mius. 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 Remember we said right. mius. Because that was... Coin Rabbi Yehuda. He actually doesn't hold a Muktzeh Machmat Isu, we're going to see. He's the Muktzeh Davar Asu. I mean, Meir holds of Muktzeh Machmat Isu, he doesn't hold of Muktzeh Machmat Mi'us. That's, that was the look between them, yeah. That's why, by the way, we're going to get into this more today. Let's just, let's go through but the Shittot. But he said, Hadash Mutar. Kedai to go through the Shittot. Let's go through them for a minute before we... I'm going to get the board. Let me just get the board. Let's see them in front of us before we go ahead. So we remember. We have like this, we have four shittot, really. The three of them we're going to discuss. Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, we're not going to discuss much today, so we don't really need to go over him. The three shittot that we're going to discuss is Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Meir, and Rabbi Shimon. So we explain like this, is you lit the candle, the these uh, cheres, it's very important that it's made out of cheres. Uh-huh. And cheres, some people, some of the shittot say, since it becomes mi'us, you're not allowed to move that anymore on Shabbat, even after the flame has gone out. It means it's okay. considered ruin, which is Rabbi Yudah's shita. So he says the only thing you're allowed to move actually is a new uh, cheres that hasn't been used yet. But if it was lit, ben ashmashot, or even if it was used previously in the week, machmat mi'us. That's the idea. That's the shita of Rabbi Yudah. Rabbi Meir was cholek on that, and he said, he said even if, um, even if it was used previously, it doesn't hold the mukt and machmat miu. So therefore, you could move it now if it was lit during ben ashmashot, because he holds mukt and machmat isu. Yes. At that time, it was isu. And he also agrees with Rabbi Yehuda, even the itkatsai b'ben ashmatot, b'ben ashmashot itkatsai lekole yoma. So he agrees, but not about the case of. So Rabbi Yehuda had two isurim, machmat mius and machmat isu. See, he doesn't agree with mukze machmat isu necessarily. Exactly. Ben ashmashot lo. Of course, meaning because it was mukze machmat mius b'ben ashmashot. Understand? But. So why are you telling me that if it's Hadash, then I can use it? Because if it's Hadash and it wasn't lit during Ben Hashmashot, 
just to okay, stop. Because... No, no, but you understand that's a chidush, because if you have a lamp, you don't usually use it for putting sugar cubes in it, but maybe you could. No, I... Reb Yudai, if it's a new lamp that wasn't used, that wasn't lit, you could use it. I get it. But that's the it's only the, example you can the, use. It's basically the kula. No, he's the most machmir shita. I understand. The kula according to the the is mekel if it's chadash, but if it's been That's yashan, it. if it's been yashan, it's also mechmat meus. If it's yashan, or if it was lit during benash mashot, you're not allowed to use it. So it's for meus because it's yashan. Okay, fine. And isu because it's benash mashot, no? Good. Rabbi Meir says that even if it's yashan, you could move it, like we explained. Not if it was lit, so. though. And Rabbi Shimon says Mutah. he's much more lenient. Means he says that the muktze is much more limited. The mela, even if it was lit during benash mashot, as long as it goes out, you can move it. You can use the extra oil, not a problem. That was the shita of Rabbi Shimon. Only unless it's really light in the middle of Shabbat. Only if it's still lit, right. exactly. Now we had a sentence after Rabbi Shimon's psaq that we read in the Brayta, but really we're going to have to figure out who's saying this because it doesn't seem to fit with the the two major shitot of Rabbi Shimon or Yehuda. What was the sentence? We said, Aval kos fikara. You see it? It's about, uh, I don't know, 15 lines from the bottom of the page. You see it? Aval kos fikara We said in the bright da, after Rabbi Shimon's psaq, that you could move it when the fire goes out. Kos fikara v'ashashit. Aval kos fikara v'ashashit. Lo yizizem A cup, a plate, or a, uh, like a, a glass lantern. He can't move them <clears throat> even after the fire has gone out. It means if he had oil in these items and the fire was lit and it went out, you're not allowed to move them even after the fire has gone out. Now, right away, the Gemara assumes this is the shita of Rabbi Shimon because it's right after in the Brayta, it's his shita. But, but the problem is... to turn and move it even if it's light. No, not even if it's lit, after it goes out. So that's the kasha. The kasha the Gemara says is, if this is the psak of Rabbi Shimon, why are you allowed to move a ner, but you're not allowed to move these once the fire goes out? What's the difference? Why should there be and any also, what's the connection between Ashashi to Kara and Kos? Okay, so we're going to see in a minute, but let's see. But the Gemara says, Ma'ish what's the difference with these? Why can't you, if this is Rabbi Shimon's shita, he holds that we don't say, Nigu de itkatsai beben ashmashot de itkatsai lekoliyoma. So once it goes out, you should be allowed to move these as well. Why can't you move these? So Ma'ula Ula says, no, this line is not the Psaq of Rabbi Shimon. Sefa atan Rabbi Yehuda. This Sefa, this extra sentence is actually following the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Now let's just speak that out. Rabbi Yehuda says like this, I hold there's a problem of muktze machmat mi'us. So therefore in a scenario where it's gla- where it's cheres, cheres, and it's mi'us, if it's muktzeh be'vein ashmashot, it's muktzeh for the whole day. But maybe you would have thought, these types of kelim, they're made out of schuchit, they're made out of glass, so maybe you would have thought, when this fire goes out, I would hold, you could move it. So that's the chidush, it's a chidush in Rabbi Yehuda, is that even the fear Rabbi Yehuda, you cannot move these even when the fire has gone out. I didn't I'm sorry, apologies. Here we try to, to, to learn what? Why it's Shayach to Rabbi Shimon, or it's not Rabbi Shimon's sentence? The Gemara, the Gemara understood oh, originally it's Rabbi Shimon because it follows Rabbi Shimon's shita. Yeah, it, doesn't it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Because Rabbi after Shimon fire goes out, you should be allowed to move. Problem. So maybe it's Rabbi, so, so Ula says Rabbi Yehuda. What has it, what's the Chidush? The Chidush is, not only by Cheres are you not allowed to move it after the fire goes out, but even with glass. It's the Chidush in Rabbi Yehuda. Is it Od Chumra? According to exactly, Rabbi exactly. But why? What? But, lama. So at this point we're assuming because there's also muktzah in this item, it was muktzah the benash mashot, and therefore it would be muktzah moving forward. But the Gemara doesn't accept this answer. But how you muktzah your I hear, I hear your kasha. But the Gemara doesn't like this answer either. And the Gemara says matkifla marzutra. Marzutra says the problem with what you're saying it doesn't fit bichlal in the language of the brayta because what did the brayta say? Ihachi mai aval. What does aval imply? Aval but, implies. Something is mutar, but this is asur. Aval is, if like you're saying it's the shita of Rabbi Yudah, it shouldn't say aval, it should say v'chen. It should say the same thing, because Rabbi Yudah previously said with the cheres vessels it's asur. V'chen, v'schuchit, gam asur litol etzeh, So therefore, 
Aval implies that we're saying something was mutar and this is asur. It's much more mashma. It's in the shita of Rabbi Shimon. But then we're left with Akasha. If that's true, why would Rabbi Shimon say you're not allowed to move this? So, Ela Amar Marzutra, Lolam Rabbi Shimon. Really, it's the shita of Rabbi Shimon. Meaning, Rabbi Shimon says, you're allowed to move the ner after it goes out. You're not allowed to move the ashashit and kara after it goes out. So what's the reason? Ma'achiluk. V'chi kashari Rabbi Shimon. It's a very, it's a logical difference. Rabbi Shimon only allows you to move it after the fire goes out. B'ner zuta de daite iluya. Remember we said, even according to Rabbi Shimon, if during binash mashot, or before Shabbat, your intention was that this is going to be something I don't touch. It's going to be something that's muktza on Shabbat. Rabbi Shimon agrees you're not allowed to move that anymore. So when it's a small candle, you assume when you light Neot Shabbat, it's not going to last through the entire Shabbat. So you and your mind have that it's going to go out, which means the Isur is going to leave, or the mitzvah is going to leave, I should say. And then whatever oil is left is going to happen three hours into sense. Shabbat. Then you'll be allowed to move it because your intention was not to disconnect from it throughout and Shabbat. You, and you know it's going to go Aval hani de nefishi. But uh, the way we're understanding is, kos, keara, ashashit are large items. It means a lot of oil. It's like a yard side candle. The assumption is when you light that Erev Shabbat, lo, because what's the stam dat of such a person? It's going to burn through the whole Shabbat. The mitzvah is there the entire time, which means it's muktza the entire time. And therefore, Rabbi Shimon says, since it's going to be in your mind, dolek the entire Shabbat, even if it goes out early, even if for some reason it goes out three hours into Shabbat, you already disconnected from this item. That's the way we're understanding the chiluk. It is muktza. It is muktza, meaning the way we're understanding is like this. The chidush is like this, that Rabbi Shimon is saying, I agree, I hold, you could move a ner, because a ner is something that usually is going to go out a few hours into Shabbat, and you're not disconnecting from it in your mind, in machshava, before Shabbat. So therefore, when the fire goes out, you could move it. There's no more hukza le mitzvato, you so could move it. Ben Ule ben Rabbi Uda. Masha'enken, when you're talking about a large vessel with oil, that's something you assume is going to burn through the entire Shabbat, and you assume you're not going to be able to move the entire Shabbat. So your machshava is to disconnect from this. Memele, even if it goes out sometime into Shabbat, you're not allowed to move that anymore. That's Rabbi the lo In Rabbi Shimon. Be kama aner ye dolek. Lo, aval if sounds like it's Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Shimon, on the same track. Rabbi Yudah? There is no meus, according to Rabbi Meir, there is Isu. Exactly. Machmat Isu. Machmat Isu. It's interesting, but I just want to point out, he of Mukhtseh Machmat Isu, Rabbi Shimon, it's Mukhtseh Machmat Mitzvah, when it's Dolek. I just want to point that out. It's a but, little bit different. Lama? Lama ma? Because if I'm designated before Shabbat, that it's going to be for as a candle. Mm-hmm. Even if it's extinguished, it's not extinguished, I'm, I'm, it's basically still Mukhtse because Machmat Isur, no? Lefimi. According to Rabbi Shimon. It's I not took the, I took the, the Why is it a sin? Oh, 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 no, so it's different. In your Machshava, if you thought this is probably going to burn through the whole Shabbat, that means you disconnected from it. But he's, he's much more lenient. He says if you don't have a Stam Dat, we assume that you could use it later. Here in Zavka, where you made a it's like almost like you said, I'm not going to use this on Shabbat. Mamela, that's Moktzeh for Shabbat. Oh, Shanken, okay. if it's a small candle, you're assuming it's going to go out and you're not disconnecting the Gamri from it. That's the Chiluk in the bright time. So basically, what's the 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 ben Rabbi Shimon to Rabbi Yudah? The major Chiluk is Migud it katzai le ben Ashmashot it katzai le kule Yudah. Yudah's Machmir, Rabbi Shimon doesn't hold of that. That's the major chiluk between them. But I mean, there's a lot but of the machshavai. The, the machshavai was also like a ktsa. That's the point. That's exactly the point. Accor- it's not exactly the same thing, though. According to Rabbi Shimon, means this the item the in the my mind, I'm separating from it. That's a different, uh, a different idea altogether. Yeah. Vatanya asks the Gemara, but wait a second. Matan. The problem is. Aktsa, Arab aktsa, Shabbi Yehuda, it's not special. Aner ayam mukse bizman shemash mashot. אלך <laughs> 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 <la
תבין את תבין איך הוא מקצה את זה במחשבה. הוא מקצה במחשבה בתלוי איזה נזק. הוא לא יקשר את זה למיטה שרצית להגיד. אולי. זה דיפרנט סטורי. והתניה, לגמרי אומרת, אבל רגע שנייה, יש בריתה שמתאים להתקדם, כי הבריתה אומרת, מותר השמן שבנר ושבקערה. The extra oil in the candle, which is small. Kara, we're saying, is big. Asur. Now Rabbi Yudah says Asur. Rabbi Shimon Matir. Rabbi Shimon says Mutar. So you see, even though it's a large, a large Kara, like the Brayta spoke about, still Rabbi Shimon holds, you didn't separate yourself from it. So the Gemara answers, no. Hatam Kara Dumya Dener. That's talking about a small Kara. Haraya, it groups it together with a Ner. Acha Kara Dumya Dekos. Not a kasha. Here we're talking about kara dumya dekos, meaning essentially the brayta is talking about a small amount of oil, the brayta is talking about a large amount of oil, and then the stam da'at will follow what the normal uh, course of action would be. Okay, let's go ahead over here. Omar Bizeira. Now, this whole discussion, remember, let's remember, we're talking about a lamp of cheres. When you talk about cheres, so then there's this idea of mukze machmat mi'us. כי זה מגיל של חס בולעת השמן. And Rabbi Yudah holds there is מוקצה מחמת מיוס. Rabbi Meir says there's no מוקצה מחמת מיוס. That was the מחלוקת between them. But if you're talking about a metal, this is what we're going to talk about now, a metal lamp, so that's not considered מיוס. You could wash off the oil. הוא לא בולע. Rashi says it doesn't absorb very much. חרס absorbs, it's בולע, and the metal is not. Because it does make a bad smell, like we spoke about those איתרן, אינף, those things that... I don't know if it's a smell or if it's just it doesn't look nice. זה המראה שלו נראה טוב. Yeah, could be both. חרס שבולע את השמן, שהחשבון נוסף נראה... So now let's just, let's hear this, let's think about this for a second. What about if you have a metal, a metal lamp? Now, Rabbi Yudah's whole issue is, The way we're talking here is מוקצה מחמת מיאוס. You shouldn't say necessarily the same thing. גם מחמת מיאוס וגם... רבי מאיר doesn't hold a מוקצה מחמת מיאוס, right? הקצה בין השמשות. So, לפי הם, what if you had a metal, a metal vessel? לפי רבי יהודה? לפי רבי מאיר. לפי רבי מאיר. What if what? If you have it... So let's see. That's gonna... You hear where there's gonna be a חיבוק over here. When you're dealing with a metal lamp, it should be different than חרס. That's what we're gonna deal with now. רבי מאיר אוכל מוקצה מחמת מיאוס? רבי יהודה? לא, רבי מאיר. רבי יהודה לא גם מיאוס. נאט איסו, כן. אה? נאט איסו. רבי יהודה לא גם מיאוס. רק מוקצה בין השמשות. מיאוס. מחמת מיאוס. ומיד אדר פינג, 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 For Shabbat, beautiful. Ledivrei hamatir. Now I'm going to explain this the way that the basic Rishonim here explain. Rabbi Meir Rashi says, according to the matir, he was the matir here because here by Cheres he said that um, we, don't hold, following we don't hold the muktzim machmat news. So according to Rabbi Meir, who's matir by Cheres, asu, metal is going to be asu. Now we cannot. This is actually obvious. This is obvious. This is not problematic. Because we said Rabbi Meir holds So really this doesn't make a difference if it's metal or if it's uh, It's Pashat that this is Muktzeh and it's going to be Asur on Shabbat Rabbi, That's not the Chidush But says Rabbi Zeira According to Rabbi Yehuda who says Asur when it comes to Cheres He's more Machmir So Mutar This is going to be מותר. Why is this going to be מותר? According to Rabbi Yudah. Because he, because why? The whole problem that he has is מיוס. This is not מיוס because metal doesn't become a problem. Fine, that's, that's. אבל מה מבין השלושות? That's the point. If you lit it, if you lit it, exactly. If you, if you lit it during בין השמשות, that's not going to be the issue necessarily. שתיים באותו דעה. For Rabbi Yudah? No, what Yochai is asking is the obvious problem. So says the Gemara, למימר, this would imply, to Rabbi Yudah, מוקצה מחמת מיוס אידלי, that he holds up the problem of מוקצה מחמת מיוס, but מוקצה מחמת איסור לטלי, he doesn't know the מוקצה מחמת איסור. And therefore what you're saying is, 
even though it was lit at Ben Hashmashot, you could still move this metal keli according to Rabbi Yehuda on Shabbat. Is no, that true? No, is that no, true? No. Of course it's not true. Fatanya, the problem is, the Brayta says clearly, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Kol anerot shel matechet, Metaltalin, Chutz min aner she liku bo v'shabbat. Now why is that, Yochai? Because even though he doesn't hold it's mokze machmat miyuz, but he holds still it's hikza ben hashmashot, hukza lekule yoma. So Elas and Oh, Rabbi Zera must have meant was like this. Yitma achi yitma. This must be what was said. Am Rabbi Zera, pamod she liku ala v'shabbat. Everybody agrees actually. Divrei akol, both Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir will hold. Asu, why is it asu? Kivan de etkatsai be ben hashmashot asu lekule yoma. Lo et leku alav. Now, if it was not lit at ben hashmashot, so according to Rabbi Yehuda, you don't have a problem of mius. According to Rabbi Meir, you don't hold of the problem of mius in the first place. So divrei akol mutar, everyone will hold. You can move it. So actually, metal kli, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir will agree. The gamma across the board. In both cases. Because if you did light it b'ben hashmashot, kivin did katzai b'ben hashmashot kula yoma, and if you didn't light it, then you could move the coin to everybody. So therefore, that comes out the pesach. Metal actually is where they agree. Interesting. Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon doesn't hold the books in machmat miyos. And therefore, when it goes out, you'd be allowed to move it. Pasha, meaning Rabbi Shimon, I'm not sure it makes a difference really because Rabbi Shimon is only if the kavana the machshava. We're actually going to mention later, we're talking about a metal vessel. We're going to see you, later. You basically I, 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 just we're going to see later. Kate. We're talking about a metal vessel. Ashi is going to point out later that it wasn't necessarily designated, designated for use. Because if it was designated to be used as a lighting, Rabbi Shimon would actually say... Asu. Asu. That's going to be interesting how we get into no, we'll, see, so, we'll see later. We'll see later. Right? So I don't, I don't want to jump the gun. We just yeah. spoke earlier and we just spoke glass. We just spoke about metal, metal. Metal, exactly. Right. According to Rabbi Shimon. So like, basically... What happens if, if the metal is a big, if big metal, chunk, big would, amount of then, then gold? For sure, for sure, that would be considered disconnect. You can't use that for sure. But if not, like a regular nair, According you According to him, it's just the amount of oil that you designated? The, the amount of oil tells us if you mean to disconnect, exactly. Okay. Okay, now we're starting the new, the new sugya here, which is... Like this, you have a story, you have like this. Usually people put money in the bank. That's what usually people do. I don't know who, <laughs> some people, they want to put, they want a bed in their house, miyuchad for money. Right? I'm not going to sleep on it. This they want to sleep with their money. They want to sleep with their money. <laughs> some people, they worship their money, they want to sleep with their money. I don't know. So now you have a situation like this, and I'll explain to you, Rashi and Tosfot, they say a little bit differently. Yochai, Taiti, where are you? Yataimadi. So, so like this. Uh, one second. Okay. Um, so the story is like this. You have, you have a, a bed, and the person before Shabbat says, let's say on Wednesday, he says this bed is designated for money storage. Money storage. And mm-hmm. Amabaya. You designate it. What's the problem? If I designate it for Shabbat, it's mukze. I cannot use it for different things. So there's a basis difference. But it's not basis. There's no I money on it yet. No, the basis. Basis means that there's a mukze item on top of a mutter item and it becomes a base for the mukze item. Here you only had machshava. Your intention was this bed on Wednesday. You said this bed is going to be now my new bank. But what happens if I have something mutar also? So now like this, Rashi learns, this is now called Kli Shem Lachtol Isu. Kli Shem Lachtol Isu, which means it's a vessel that is primary use, primary zikar, its main use is for Isu. Tosvot learns it actually becomes Muktzeh itself, which is more Chamu. I want to just point out the Nafkamina between them. Tosvot points this out. The Nafkamina between them is if you could move it, if it's just clear, so you're not allowed to move it, but if you need that place or you need to pr- protect it or something like that, then you would be allowed to move it according to Rashi. According to Tosvo, that it becomes Mukze itself, you're actually not allowed to move it. But whichever Shita you go with. Well, what's different with the Mukze himself? 
if it, it, it becomes primarily asur, means it's entirely used for a prohibited thing, it's not only primarily, it becomes like, is, is kli shem lachto le so We're not going to get too deep into this right now. I don't want to get too deep into it because it's not really no get to understand the sugya. Is that Hashem without I have a bed, speak about it? And on the bed, there is no money. No, there's nothing to do. You On Wednesday, you say, this bed is my new bank. No. That's my bed. I'm not sleeping on it. I'm using it as a bank. But there's not, nothing on it yet. The point is, now it becomes a so. Either it's klish melech tole. So it's mukze, fine. Let's see. So it's amav yud amarav. Mita sheichada lemaot. A bed was designated for money. Okay? Wednesday. Asur letaltila. You're not allowed to move that bed on Shabbat. Now, again, it's klish melech tole. So mukze, whatever you like. There's no money on it. It was designated for money, and now it's a sort to move it. The Rav Yehuda, right? What's that? The now, Rav. Rashi explains, Rav Yehuda Amar Rav, that's who it says here, is following the sheet of the Tana Rebbe Yehuda, because he's more machmir, he's more inclusive when it comes to muktze, and therefore even designating it alone would make it already something that's a sort to move on Shabbat. Now, by the way, a bed, you could still sleep in a bed, but just by designating it, it already makes it, you can't move it, you can't be involved like Moktzeh. Fine. Meit tevei Rav Nachman by Yitzchak, Nachman by Yitzchak, ask Hasha against Rav Yudah Marav. Wait a second. You're going in the Tana Rabbi Yehuda. We know, what does Rabbi Yehuda say about Nerot, about the candles? He said in the bright that we had before, Metal telin ner chadash, avalo yashan. Very important Rashi. We know it's halacha. If it wasn't used, that what's the halacha? You could move it. Why are you allowed to move it? Because it's not mi'us and it's not used yet. <clears throat> if it was used previously, even if it's not lit, it's assert to move anymore. Mi'us. Says Rashi, what do you see from this? He only says if it was used that it becomes problematic. But what if you, you know, Bichlal, what is a candle usually used uh-huh. for? It's usually used for lighting with oil. And yet, even though it's designated, for something that's going to be a so something that's going to make it muktze, you're still allowed to move it if it wasn't used yet. And this is the Tana Rabbi Yehuda. Oh. Oh. If regarding a candle that's made for the prohibited muktze use, but kilo hidlikva shari letaltila, nonetheless, if you didn't light with it yet, it's chadash. Rabbi Yehuda holds you're allowed to move it. So mita de lav a bed, it's not usually made as a, as a bank, a bed, a bed is made to sleep in a bed. So lo kol sheken, certainly if you just designate it for money, that shouldn't make it a sort to move on Shabbat. So says says the Gemara is asking a kasha against, uh, against Rabbi Yehuda Marav, Rabbi Nachman Yehuda says, from the bright day you see from the psak of Rabbi Yehuda that the designation alone, this, how do you say designation in Hebrew? I guess hukze. The the designation Aksha. alone shouldn't make it a sort to move. Well, it's only maybe, problem if there's something on it or whatever, but not if it's just designated. Maybe it's different. Maybe it's different. Why is it different? Because the 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 kara, it's something that you know in your mind. This is a, something for the isu. Can be isu. But mita, talo ragila sim bakesef. Maybe ya kira chazim mishana le. Gazer chazal gazu kilu ikshu al ze gmar me'ach shav ze mukse. Lama adam agili shon al mita. Uishkach shish beze kesef. Tamin ma kore. There's no money on it. That's the point. Meaning you might end up sleeping on it when there is money on it. It's it's, it's a very strong extension of muktzeh, you understand? Meaning it's like, if you think about it, you're talking about a bed. A bed is meant for sleeping. Yes. Just like a a nair is meant for lighting, which is actually asu. And yet we're saying that where the nair is not yet used, you can move it around on Shabbat. So, that's the kasha the Gemara is asking. A bed which is be'etzem used for sleeping. You're going to tell me such a strong chumrah like that? That's the kasha the Gemara is asking. I think that the chiluk is not equal here. Okay, no, why? Because it's probably probably exera. Shema person will designate something. I mean, the Gemara is going to accept the kasha. It's a good kasha. It's a very good It's kasha. going to change the pshat. Meaning, Rav Yudam Rav said... We're going to change what he meant to say. I'm just saying. I think it's Mikabel, the kasha. I don't think it's Mikabel. This kasha. The Gemara is going to say it can't be. The Gemara is going to say it can't just be if it's it's designated that it's muktzeh. It doesn't doesn't work. I don't think it's a fair comparison. Yeah. And I think it might be a gzera if a person designates something 
that he's not going to end up that he's actually moving during Shabbat because it changes Machshava or something or designation. But there's no money on it. What's the problem? Still, but if you are makze something, let's say isu. No. Okay, then you end up that you're going to move something else. But the nair is by definition. Is a su. But the nair is by definition usable for some sort of a isu, some sort of a mukze. And yet we say if it's not used, you could still move it. That's the kasha. So this, where you thought to use it for money, it's it's a very strong extension. And the Gemara accepts this question, so it changes what Rav Yudam Rav meant to say. It must be something else. So the Gemara says like this, Mita de lab la achi avi lo kol sheken. So certainly, should, if you, you didn't put money on it yet, it's not the normal thing to put money, certainly you should be allowed to move it. Ele'it ma'achit ma. This must be what Rav Yudam Rav meant to say. I'm Rav Yudam Rav. Listen, listen to the difference. Mita shei chadal ma'ot. If he just designated it for money, he niach aleha ma'ot asor letam kazah. Now, it means if he put money on it on Wednesday, even as Arashi learns, even if he took the money off before Shabbat, Afilo, he removed it, it's already Asur. Why? Because the action of putting money, that's more than just a designation. So even though the money was removed before Shabbat, it's like now it's Hukza, now it's already separated. But Loi if all that happened was he just thought this is going to be used for money, and he never put money, mutar just the machshava alone, without any physical ma'aseh, that's not enough to make it a problem. That's what Rashi says here. Meaning, it's a problem even if he took it off before Shabbat. Afal gav, daniach ala mot b'chol, exactly. One second. Yeah, exactly. But if he didn't designate it for money, yesh this is the last part of the Rav Yudamara, we're explaining the words. If there's money on it, asur la Why is it asur la if there's money on it? Means he didn't even think. Means if he didn't think to use it for money, but there's money on it, so then you're not allowed to move that bed. You actually do the action. There's money on the bed, right? But my action, I didn't designate it. Asur la ta'otila. Slicha, yesh alea ma'od, no, yesh alea ma'od now. Now, now there's money on it. It's Shabbat. Again, exactly, going into Shabbat. Yesh alea ma'od, asur le'tal tala. Before Shabbat. Lo, 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 yesh po shetem ba'an, shalosh ba'an shalim. Lo yichada ma'od. Again, let's go through. Yichada ma'od. Tare li yifutu ba'gmara. The fifth line in the gmara. Fifth. Amra vidamara. Look at Amra vidamara. Mita shichada ma'od. Ini yichada ma'od. Asur le'tal tala. Even though the money was removed before Shabbat. Let's, wow. let's put it together. Machshava plus ma'aseh. Asu. Asu. Lo iniach alea ma'ot. All it was was machshava. Mutar letantila. It's like a candle that hasn't been used for oil left. It's not for, for oil yet. Lo yichada le ma'ot. But lo yichada le ma'ot. It means if he didn't even designate it. it he didn't but it's think, Shabbat. He didn't you think to use it. On Wednesday, he didn't think to use it for money. Now, yesh alea ma'ot, if on Shabbat there is money, so asur the ta'atila, there's money on it, it's a problem, it's mukhtse, it's a basis, v'chudek. En alea ma'ot, now if there's no money on that bed, so he didn't think to designate it, and there's no money on it, mutar the ta'atila, you are allowed to move it on This is the key, which we're going to catch in a minute. V'hu shelo ayu alea ben ashmashot, this is who? Rabbi Yudah l'shitato. What's his shita? If the money was there during Bein Hashmashot, so now it's a basis, the Dava Mokze, the whole thing becomes a sort to move. So let's, just, let's just explain that last piece now. It comes out like this. In a case where he didn't designate it for, for money use, if there's money on it, you're not allowed to move it. Of course, it's Shabbat. If there's no money on it, there's no money on it, what? If there's no money on it, so then you're allowed to move it, as long yeah. as there was no money there during Ben Mashot. Now what does that mean? I mean? If there was money there during Ben Mashot, and somehow the money was taken off, a goy took it off, you're still not allowed to move that bed. You understand? Because since... That's, that's what we're saying, Rabbi Yudah Marav is following Rabbi Yudah. So therefore it comes out that as a basis during Ben Mashot, it becomes a sur for the rest of the day. That's the chidush we just said. If a goy moved the mukte, the mukte item from... Uh, Basis. If the goy move the muk side them, what's the problem? No, it is said if they are it, they are not. No, even if they are it, if they are doing the shod. Let's finish the sugya and I'll tell you that. He says over here. I'll tell you in a minute. But let's finish the sugya. Amar Ula, because I do want to finish to the bottom at least. I really want to. Let's see. Let's see. Is that Hashem? Now, what review the Amar Rav is coming out? Lefir review Rebbe Yudah the Tana. 
is that if it's a basis with davar mukze b'shat ben hashmashot, even if the money was removed afterwards, it doesn't make a difference. So what we're about to show is there's a mishnah mesechet kelim that seems to contradict this. It's a stira. We're going to see that even if it was money there or there was mukze on something b'ben hashmashot, you could move it after. Okay. If, it was if the if the mukze was removed, obviously. What's the case we're going to talk about? Okay, so you have here a chariot. Mazda chariot. I don't know what you call it in chariot. 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 Okay. chariot. Um, and you have attached to the chariot is wheels. Wheels, okay? Um, now, like this. We learned this halacha earlier, actually. When it comes to Tuman Tara, in order to be Mechabel Tum'ah, it needs to be considered a Kli. Now, a wooden vessel, to be considered a kli, cannot be too big. Because if it's too big, you can push it there too big. Yeah. Remember, we learned too this? heavy. If it's too big, it's not metal ter What does it mean? If you can't move it when it's full, it's not considered a kli. It's going to break. It's not considered a kli anymore, and it's not a kabel. What was the number? Remember, we said? Belach. That's what we said in the, if you remember. Okay, like 20, the other she taught, the, the, we learned the Mishnah, and the Mishnah here goes with that. Arba'im sa'a belach means if the box holds 40 sa'a of water, it's gonna liquid, it's going to break when you move it. It's not a kli, and the mail it's not mekabel tum'a. Okay. Now, if you have a chariot, ah, so now like this, let's now deal with, there's two back. sections we're going to deal with here. We have the main body of the chariot, and we have wheels. Now, the wheels have mekomot that they're able to mekabel masho, like bet kibul. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, the wheels could become tameh as well. It's a wooden vessel. There's some place they use for storage. But it's attached. In the wheels. Oh. There's a chiluk. Four halachot we're about to show. Four areas of halachot. Really three points, but four areas. Where there's a chiluk between the way the chariot is made, the construction. Some chariots, the wheels were kavua, part of the chariot, and some of them, the way that Mishnah and Kilim talks, is nishmetet, meaning it slipped off. It was not kavua as part of the chariot. It's like the body and they attached the different wheels. Exactly. Mulcham, mulcham, yeah. or impin. Exactly. <laughs> now look, the two, the, the diff, there's going to be four differences we're going to list in the Mishnah. But we're going to tie back, which is the fourth difference we'll get to. This inyan of having something mukta on the item, the ben hashmashot, we're going to show it doesn't answer for the whole day. Kasha again, again, what's it? At the end of this whole story, we're going to see a kasha against this psak, which is that even though the mukta was on the item, on the mutar item, the ben hashmashot, you could still move it. On the wheel? Let's see, let's see, we'll get the to the minute. item. Was. On the mutar item, the ben hashmashot, if it's removed, you could move it after again, Shabbat. Sorry, again, no. Don't worry about it. We, we, <laughs> just explain. <laughs> the bottom line is like this. So you have the base, the body of the chariot, and you have the wheels. Now, there's a chiluk, four chilukim in halacha, if the wheels are attached, or if they're like kavua, or if they're able to be removed. That's mm -hmm. what we're going to see. Probably. Okay? So let's go through them. Let's go through the four chilukim. Let's see. Now again, Ula is asking Akasha and Ravida Maras. Amar Ula, Mativ Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer asked Akasha from this Mishnah and Kelim. The Mishnah says like this, Muchni Shala. Muchni is the wheels. The wheels of the wagon or of the chariot. Bizman Shehi Nishmetet. At a time, if the wheels that are Nishmetet, meaning they're removable. It's like uh, the braces, they take off. If they're removable, so they're not considered part, part of, of the, the chariot. chariot. Yes, chariot. Okay, so that's the key here. Number one, en chibula. So number one, halacha number one is, it's not considered connected to it. Okay, so let's read Rashi, no, explains like this. Kegon, for example, she'ina, if you look at en chibula, de chashuva hi kekli la'atzma, de ish sheida, the wagon, bat kbulei tum'ahi, kegon, she'ina machzek et arba'im sa'a belach, so if the chariot itself is 30 se'a, which means it is mekabel tum'ah, v'nitma'a sheida, and the sheida became tameh, lo nitma'a mochni. The wheels do not become tameh, because a kli cannot make another kli tameh. It doesn't work that way with kabbalat tum'ah. Let's just accept that and not fight about it. V'ilav bat kvulei tum'ah, but if the uh, main body of the 
chariot is not mikabel tuma, means it holds forty sa. Vinag atum a bemuchni ha muchnit me ala atzma. Evanta? No. Like this. Like this. If the main body of the chariot is 30 sa, so that means it is able to become tameh. So let's say the main body becomes tameh. Now, if the wheels are movable, it's not one piece. So then it's considered a separate kli, uh-huh. which means even if the main body becomes tameh, okay. the wheels do not become tameh. Okay. I didn't really get like the. the you say muchni shela. Muchni is wheels. Right, Sh- Shmeta means detached. The point is, it's not considered... It's removable? Removable, removable. It's not considered one part of the piece of the, of the chariot itself. Alakha <laughs> number one. So alakha number one is like this. Since it's movable, if the main body becomes Tameh, the wheels don't become Tameh. Okay. And vice versa. If the wheels become Tameh, the main body doesn't become Tameh. Because it's not one piece. It's not one piece. Now, if it was Kavua... And one, the whole thing becomes Tameh. Evanta, that's Chiluk number one. But the only Chiluk, that, that's just the Halakha, is if the main body is not Arbaim Sa, it's 30 Sa. But it's not Lach. One second. No, it, it, that's just a minute. It, it, could, hold, it could hold oh. Arbaim Sa Abelach. It's a size. But the Chiluk that Rashi is just explaining is, is that if the main body is 30 Sa Abelach, it could become Tameh. Even if it becomes Tameh, the wheels don't become Tameh. Now, if the main body is not able to become Tameh, it's Arbaim Sa'ah, so then the wheels could become Tameh and it won't affect the main Living body. Right. It's considered disconnected, chariot, that's the point. Is that? Chariot? What's that? Chari- chariot, 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 a wagon, exactly. Kirkara. Yeah, exactly. Kirkara. The point is, but if it was connected and the main body was 40 Sa'ah, the wheels can't become Tameh either. You understand? If it was connected and the main body was 40 sa'ah, the whole thing can't become tameh. But since it's two different pieces, the wheels could become tameh because by themselves. Because it's too big? Because it's too big, exactly. That's chiluk number one. Mukhni shala bizman shishme echi bula. Number one. Number two. Ve'ein nimdedet ima. It's not measured along with it. It means if you're trying to figure out, is this bat mekabel tumah, is this able to become tameh or not? I.e., is it 40 sa or less than so 40 sa? So we're talking about big bed? If the bed is too big for Not bed, not bed, chariot. Chariot. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get there, let's just get to Because these really are not no to our point. Just get it clear. So it's not measured to see if it's 40 sa or not. It's considered a separate unit. Masha'enken, if it was connected, it would be measured along with it. Is the space of the wagon considered 40 sa, including the wheels, if it was connected? Number two. Number three, It wouldn't be saved So Rashi explains what that means is like this. If the chariot was moving along, it was traveling, and it passed over a dead body. Okay, the chariot passed over a dead body. And usually the rule is Tuma goes up. So if somebody was sitting in the chariot or there's Kelim inside of the chariot, if that chariot is considered a kli and it's mekabel tum'ah, so it, the tum'ah, it becomes tameh and then the tum'ah goes through and whoever's inside of it also becomes okay. tameh. But let's say the chariot is arba'im sa'ah. So it does not become tameh and it blocks tum'ah from going into the chariot as well. Okay. Also tum'at met? Tum'at met, it blocks it. It blocks it. It's ma'ahil, okay. it blocks it, meaning in a good way. is It makes it that now the person or the kelim inside does not become Tameh. So if the rest of it is 40, it becomes time. But if the wheels are not connected, the wheels aren't part of the main item. Then it, so then what ends up happening okay. is if there's wheels on the sides and there's kelim on top of it, those could become tameh and the things on top of it are not blocked because it's a separate unit. Mm-hmm. If it was one piece, so then it would all block the tumah and it wouldn't allow whatever's on top of it to become I mean, all of those chilukim are not nogeya to our sugya. Okay, so this, this is what is nogeya. Number four, ve'en gorerin ota b'shabbat b'zman sheyesh aleha ma'ot. You can't drag the chariot on Shabbat if there's money in the wheels. Now, Maza Omer, so Tosvot explains, what it means is like this. Since the wheels are disconnected, it's a separate piece. So therefore... Separate piece of what? From what? From the wagon. It's not considered part of the, the wagon. Wheels. The wheels are nishmetet. They're not considered part of the wagon. Therefore, they have a chashivut b'fnei atzman. 
Since they have a chashivut, a significance by themselves, mm-hmm. if there's money on those wheels, on it, it's a basis for mukta, and you're not allowed to move the entire wagon because in moving it, you're moving the wheels as well. As opposed to, let's put it together, let's say the wheels were connected meaning kavua, they were actually, so then the wheels is not the ikar of this item. What's the ikar of this item? Chariot. The goof, the, the chariot. Memela, the money on the sides wouldn't make it a sword to move this because that's considered like insignificant, yeah. not chashuv. That's but now that it is chashuv, because it's considered a separate yeah, item, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't move the entirety of the wagon. Yeah, exactly. It's the same principle. Yeah, what's that? How we can make the, the, the hill of money it's like on this. the, way, if, the wheels? If the wheels is considered chashuv b'fneatzma, i.e. it's not connected to the whole thing, so then it's a basis for money, and it is a chashuv basis for money, then you can't move the entire item because there's money on it on Shabbat. Masha Enken, if it's connected, so Tosvot says the wheels are considered just like tafel to the main body, and then you would be allowed to move it even if there was money on the wheels. But what's the key? This is the point. What does the Brayta say? It's not... What is the Mishnah, exactly. What is the Mishnah and Kelim telling us? It's telling us it's only a sort to move if what? <laughs> if the money is on it now, mashma. <laughs> if it was only on it, and then the Goy took the money off, you could move it on Shabbat. Okay. Kasha. Because we just finished saying, going to Rabbi Yehuda, even having the muktz on the bed, the money on the bed, Bebenashmashot makes it, you can't move it the entire day. But here it says only if the money is on the wheels now on Shabbat, you can't move it. Mashma, even if it's there, Bebenashmashot, but it was moved after, you could move it. Kasha against Rabbi Yehuda Marav. Let's read that inside. Says the Gemara, which is the Kasha that Rabbi Eliezer is asking against Rabbi Yehuda Ha Mashma, if there was no money on it now, it's mutar to move. Even if it was there at the time of Ben So what's the obvious answer, Chavra? This is a Mishnah Kelim. We're challenging Rav Yudah Marav who holds like Rav Yudah. So what's the easy way to get out of this kasha? One second. If there is... There's two cases here. We have money on a bed and we have money on the wheels. We said, if the money's on the wheels, dafka now, you can't move it. Mashma, if it was there, Ben Hashmashot, and a goy took it off on Shabbat, uh, it depends you could move it. Depends if there is or no. No, forget about the chashivut. That was a side point, which is if you can drag it, if we look at it, but let's say there is chashivut, so you're not allowed to move it, even though the money's on it now, that's the point. As long as it's on it now. Mashma, if it was only there, but ben hashmashot, you could move it now. As long as it was, as long as it was, uh, as long as it was not there now, that's the key. So the kasha is, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda Amar Rav said, even, as long as the money was there, but ben hashmashot, you're not allowed to move the bed, even if it was removed after. So what's the answer? No. What's the easy answer? You hear the kasha though. Shamei akasha, you hear the kasha? So they're not following the shita? Ah, oh, easy. Because who which shita <laughs> holds that? We don't hold of kivan de itkatsai ben hashmasha. Who holds that way? Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon. So the Mishnah and Kelim follows Rabbi Shimon, no problem. Again, so the Gemara okay. answers, Ha'i Rabbi Shimon, he delet le muktze. He is not machmir when it comes to muktze. The Rav, ke Rabbi Yehuda sfirle. And Rav holds like Rabbi Yehuda. So it's like this. According to Rabbi Shimon, even if the money was there, Rabbi Hashmashot, as long as it was removed after, it's fine, no problem. According to Rabbi Yehuda, no, kivin de tatsai be ben hashmashot, et katsai le kole yoma. So therefore, it's not a kasha at all, because actually it works out. The Mishnah follows Rabbi Shimon, and Rabbi Yehuda Marav is paskin like Rabbi Yehuda, so it's not a kasha. As, as, no problem. Zerak lefi Rabbi Shimon. But not lefi Rabbi Yehuda. If you're Rabbi Yehuda, if it was there, be ben hashmashot, you're not allowed to move it afterwards also. It's a problem. Exactly. Not a kasha, not a problem. Excellent. Okay.
דלת למוקצר, שלא סובר, דיש אל מוקצר, לפי שאתה אומר לנו שהמוקצר סובר מוקצר. So the Gemara is like this. The Rav Kerb Yehuda Sfirle. I'm going to show you a proof that Rav actually follows the Tana Rav Yehuda. It's a Memheim Rav now. Meaning, I'm going to show you a proof that Rav holds like Rav Yehuda of Migudi Itkatsai Vibena Shmashot let me just speak out the proof outside and then we'll see it inside. We're going to see a psak that Rav Yudama Rav said, Rav really said, but Rav Yudama Rav is like this. We know on Shabbat and Yom Tov there's an Yisur called Kotzer. What is Kotzer? Harvest. To harvest, but it means to break something off from its source of life. It means to break off a branch is an issue of Kotzer. Because of that, the Chachami made a gezera. You're not allowed to use a tree or climb in a tree on Shabbat or Yom Tov. Because what might end up happening, Tolesh, Kotez, you'll break thing. it. Tolesh, a similar idea, I guess. But the point is that you might end up breaking off a branch. It's a gzera, okay? So it's a gzera. Now, we're going to discuss a case like this. You want to put, before Shabbat or before Yom Tov, you want to make it a romantic evening for Shabbat and Yom Tov. So you want to put candles in the tree. Very fancy, okay? Put candles in the tree. Yeah? So you put candles in the tree, Erev Shabbat, Erev Yom Tov. Is there any problem with that? No. What's the problem, right? No problem. So if Yudama Rav, Rav is going to pass in like this, Erev Shabbat, you're not allowed to do that. Aslicha, Erev Yom Tov, you're not allowed to do that. Erev Shabbat, you are allowed to do that. Now what's the chiluk? The chiluk is like this. On Yom Tov, you're allowed to move the fire, the chlal. You're allowed to move it. Even if even, you could you have to wait for the fire and you don't want to put it out, but you have to be careful you're allowed to move the fire. On Shabbat, on Shabbat, you're not allowed to move the fire. That's going to be the, the proof, actually. I'll, see, I'll show you in a minute. The Chachamim were worried, since on Yom Tov you're allowed to move the fire, so what might end up happening is that after the fire's gone out, you'll go up in the tree to remove the Kli. And once you're going up in the tree, that's already a problem because you might end up breaking off a branch. Masha Enkin on Shabbat, after the fire's gone out, according to Rabbi Yehuda, you're not allowed to move the kli anyways. So therefore, you're not going to go up in the tree altogether. And that's why since there's more of a chumrah on Shabbat, we're not worried if you put the candle there on Shabbat, but we are worried if you put the candle there on Yom Tov. Now the proof we're going to say is like this. If That's Rav's psak. If Rav held, held you're allowed to move the kli after the fire's gone out, like Rabbi Shimon, so then there wouldn't be a chiluk between Shabbat and Yom Tov. Because once the fire has gone out on Shabbat, you'd also be allowed to move it, and we should be worried you might go up in the tree to retrieve the vessel. It must be that Rav holds like Rabbi Yehuda the Tana, and therefore even though the fire has gone out, you're still not allowed to move the Kli, and that's why we don't have to make a Gezerah Erev Shabbat, but we do make a Gezerah Erev Yom Tov. That's the proof. Let's read that inside. That's a different topic. Well, it's a raya. Kivin de tkatzai b'ben hashmashot de tkatzai lekula yoma. The Amar Rav menichim ner al gabi dekel b'Shabbat. You are allowed to put a candle erev Shabbat in the tree, but ve'en menichim ner al gabi dekel b'Yom Tov, not erev Yom Tov. 
Why? Because Erev Yom Tov, since you're allowed to move the candle on Yom Tov, so therefore you might end up climbing in the tree and moving it. Erev Shabbat, <coughs> on Shabbat you're not allowed to move the Kli. Mamele, you're not going to go up in the tree, and there's no Gzeira, you might end up climbing in the tree. Now, Iyamrit Bishlam, the Rav, Rav Yudah, Spiralei, if Rav Paskins like Rav Yudah, Migudit Katsai, Haim Dushani Ben Shabbat Yom Tov, then there's a natural Chiluk, that on Shabbat it's Muktzeh, and therefore the whole day it's Muktzeh, we're not worried you're going to climb in the tree. But if you held like Rabbi Shimon, once the fire goes out, you're allowed to move it on Shabbat. So Mali Shabbat to Mali Yom Tov. You should have a concern with Shabbat too. You might go up and get the kli. Must be Rav Paskins like Rabbi Yehuda. And Memela, that's why you're allowed to put it in the tree. We're not worried you're going to move it. Beautiful. Says the Gemara Kasha from a story. V'rav k'rav Yudah s'firlei. Does Rav hold like the Tanner of Yudah migudit katsai? V'habau minei d'rav. They asked the Rav the following question. At that time in Bavel, there was a group of people called Chabari. Chabarei. These were people that uh, decreed against the Jews. And one of the things they decreed was, you're not allowed to have fire. Rashi learns either on a day that they, or Bechlal, they wanted to be mevatel, Nerot Shabbat, or Nerot Chanukah. Or it was specifically on the day of their Yom Tov, you weren't allowed to have fire outside of their place of Avodah Zarah. So the Jews weren't allowed to light uh, candles. So they asked Rav Yuda, uh, they asked Slicha, they asked Rav the following question: What we want to do is like this: We want to light the Nerot before Shabbat, erev Shabbat Chanukah. We want to light the Nerot Shabbat, uh, Nerot Chanukah like we're supposed to at the edge of the chatzir, like we're supposed to. But we want to, after it burns out, we want to bring it in on Shabbat. So they asked this question to Rav. Could we bring the lamp back in after the candle has gone out, which is already on Shabbat? Why? Because we don't want the chabare to see us, because we're not supposed to have it there, lefi their gzera, and give us problems, okay? So they asked Rav, are we allowed to? V'amr lehu shaper dami, and Rav said, you could. So says the Gemara, Rav, wait a second. If Rav Paskins like Rav Yudah, the Tana, you're not allowed to move it after the fire's yeah, gone you're out. You're talking about like a chasan aner, a penelisti. So oh. you're talking about... Oh. So the Gemara answers, Sha'at adchak shane. It's different when it's Sha'at adchak. And she says, it's, it's a dangerous time that they're going to start beating you up. It's not talking about sakanat nefashot, because then of course they'd be allowed to. The point is that even if it's just going to be they beat them up or they... Uh, extort money from them, etc. That's why Rav Paskin like that. Because the students turned to Rav and they said, They said, Is this the halacha? You're Paskin like Rabbi Shimon, you could move it after the fire goes out. Amr Lehi said to them, No, I'm being so mech on Rabbi Shimon. I hold like Rabbi Yehuda. You're not allowed to move a kli after the fire's gone out. Because Migudit Katsai. Why am I saying you can move it here? Because Chabare are going to give you problems. So you could be Somech and Rabbi Shimon, Bishat Adchak, but my Paskin like Rabbi Yuda. Okay, we're going to stop here, Chabra. Uh, towards the top of Mehemad Aleph. Okay. Let's go yeah. back one second. We'll go back, no problem. We'll do a little bit. Bamine, Satashem. Chabra, stop. Yeah.